I'm Mike Allenson of ABB, and this is a short tutorial to remind you of the relationship between mass flow and volumetric flow, and how correct selection of the flow variable can lead to significant process optimization and cost effectiveness. In a fluid, whether it's liquid, gas, or steam, its density is defined by its mass divided by the volume of the fluid. If you change one of these variables, another will change to balance the equation. To get the best measurement of your process fluid, you must be aware of this relationship. With a dense, stable liquid like water, it's easy to measure it by volume or mass. If you vary the mass by mixing a lower density liquid, such as oil, for example, or you have entrained gas bubbles or higher density solids, the overall density will change, and the volume to mass relationship changes. If you allowed liquids with different densities to flow through a volumetric flow meter at the same velocity, you would, of course, notice no difference in flow rate. If you repeated this through a mass flow meter, there could be a significant change, directly dependent on the difference in densities. Ask yourself, what is your product, process, or business based on? Volume or weight measurement? Remember, mass and weight are directly related. If you're buying or selling by volume, you could continue using volumetric flow measurement, of course. But if you are using weight as your final measurement, you need mass flow to make sure that your measurement is as accurate as possible. Take, for example, filling yogurt pots. Yogurt density will vary depending on the amount of fruit in it and the specific recipe of the yogurt. How do you know you're getting the fruit and the recipe you pay for unless you know the mass and hence its weight for a particular volume? Many commodities, including high viscosity liquids, are often priced by weight, not volume. Take another example. If you're buying fuel oil, the weight of the tanker immediately tells you which grade you're getting for your money. The density information from a Coriolis mass meter could warn you if the grade of fuel oil being dispensed is incorrect. When dealing with gases, the same overall equation is true. But the density of a gas will vary with its temperature and its pressure. Mixing gases will also affect the density of the mixture. As you compress a gas, the volume measurement changes but the mass measurement of the gas remains the same. Compressed air is not free. It costs your process as much as the energy needed to compress it in the first place. If you measure airflow with a mass meter, you have an accurate and stable measurement of how much compressed air you're using and distributing, offering better accuracy and control possibilities of compressed air usage and generation around your plant. Engineers frequently express mass flow measurements in volumetric units. However, to be able to compare volume-based flow rates, it's necessary to introduce standard or normalized conditions for temperature and pressure. It's imperative you determine whether any gas figures you're talking about are being considered in normalized units, standardized units, for example, standard cubic feet or SCF, or in fact actual units of the pressure and temperature conditions that exist in the pipe. Here we have an example of a comparison between normalised volume and actual volume. If we run both of these volumes through a system, 0.1 cubic metres actual per second is actually equal to one normal cubic metre per second. The volume flow is different in both cases. However, the mass flow rate is identical. In some areas of application and with some older equipment, standardised cubic feet are used, or SCF. These are expressed as if the gas is measured in cubic feet at 60 degrees Fahrenheit and one atmosphere. It's critical when making or comparing volumetric gas flow measurements to establish whether you are talking about actual, normal or standard units. Remember, if you use actual volumetric units, accurate comparison of different flows is impossible unless the same pressure and temperature conditions exist. The relationship of steam, density, mass and volume is very similar to gas, but for dry saturated steam, which is normally used in boiling and steam plants, steam distribution networks, the density of dry saturated steam is directly proportional to a defined temperature and pressure curve. This reduces the number of variables that need to be considered. To measure dry saturated steam flow through a distribution network or boiler system and work out the amount of steam energy actually lost and used by the network, it's important to compare flow in terms of mass measurement of 
standardized volumetric measurement to calculate the mass balance. Volumetric meters can be used with additional pressure or temperature measurements and flow computers to calculate the mass flow. However, single compact mass meters are becoming more popular in current day use. The mass of steam generated by a boiler can be related to the mass of the fuel used to generate the steam to calculate boiler efficiency. Because the density and hence quality of your steam varies continuously, measurement in actual volumetric units of steam can be inaccurate. The key to accurate, consistent measurement of steam system efficiency is to use mass flow measurement of your steam output and distribution to identify low efficiency boiler operation and plant areas and machines with poor leakage performance or reduced efficiencies. In summary, this is what you need to remember about mass meters for various applications. For liquid mass flow measurements, especially where variations in product density are common and the product is priced by weight, Coriolis meters should always be considered. Their high accuracy and repeatability means excellent cost savings, and because product density can be measured, the quality of the product or even its identity can be assessed. For gas mass flow measurement, consider systems such as thermal mass metering, for example the ABB Sensiflow system, or perhaps DP flow metering, such as the Orimaster M. These techniques offer very economical solutions, particularly in large pipe sizes, and also offer low pressure drop to minimize energy losses and very wide measurement ranges, allowing accurate measurement even at low flow conditions. For steam mass flow measurement, consider vortex meters, ABB's unique swirl meter, or differential pressure devices such as Orimaster M. The swirl meter is a very compact design for tight installations around a steam network. With direct two-wire measurement, integration into plant control systems is simple.